Hey everybody, Jack Lucky, Mortgage Advisor here, and welcome to the second video in my Credit Basics series. So today's video, we're going to go over getting and understanding your credit reports and scores, and also how to review your reports for accuracy and correct any errors that you find. So if when you're thinking about credit, you feel like this lady behind me, you're in the right place. Stay tuned. Let's get started. First off, you have the right to receive your own credit report for free. There is a law set in place that you can get one free credit report every 12 months from each of the three nationwide credit reporting agencies, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. The way you get those is you go to annualcreditreport.com. This is not freecreditreport.com. That's a different company. They are a for-profit company that will try to sell your information or try to get you on some kind of credit monitoring plan or whatever. And there are lots of other companies out there that do that too. The, the short way to tell if you're in the right place is if they ask you for a debit or credit card number, you're in the wrong place. Annualcreditreport.com will not ask for your credit or debit card. They won't try to sell you anything. They are a government controlled website that gets you your credit reports for free. There are also other ways you can get your credit report for free. If you are receiving public assistance, you're entitled to a free credit report. If you're unemployed and looking for a job, if you're a victim of identity theft, or if you're denied credit from somewhere, then you are entitled to a free copy of your credit report for that as well. And those are over and above your once annual that you get for free anyway. What about credit scores? Now you can get your credit report for free. Getting your credit score is a little bit more difficult. Now, there are some credit cards out there that will give you your credit score as kind of a, a perk on their credit card. Uh, also, when you have a right to a score, like when you uh, apply for credit for somewhere, the company that pulls your credit, they actually have to disclose to you your credit score at that time. And then also you can get it from the three nationwide credit reporting agencies, but you usually have to pay for that. There are other companies out there like Credit Karma and Credit Sesame and all these other vendors that will give you your credit score. However, those are not your actual credit scores. Now, what those companies do, and if you read the fine print on any of those companies, they'll tell you this. What they do is they receive a copy of your credit report from one or two, or in some cases, all three bureaus and they use the information from a credit report to generate their own estimate of your credit score. Now, this is a very imperfect science because it's not the exact same scoring model. They get as close as they can, but the FICO model is a proprietary model that no one else can use, so theirs is different. And also, it's based on information they get from your credit report once a month. Your actual credit report is updated every day with new information, and your credit score can change every day based on that information. So when you are using your Credit Karma or anything else, any, any other service that's giving you an estimate of your credit score, they can sometimes be off. It's still good as a guideline to kind of get you in the ballpark of where you are, but I've seen them be off as much as 40 points from an actual hard inquiry and what they say on Credit Karma. So next thing you wanna do, once you've gotten a copy of your credit report from annualcreditreport.com, the next thing you wanna do is review it for accuracy. Look for any identity errors, maybe they have your name wrong, maybe there's a wrong digit in your social security number or your date of birth, anything like that incorrect reporting of account status. Uh, maybe it says that uh, an account is closed, but it's actually still open. Data management errors, balance errors, or outdated information, anything like that, you can get fixed. So the way you get things fixed is by filing a dispute. And you can file a dispute right there from annualcreditreport.com or, or going to the three credit bureaus websites and filing a dispute. Now, when you file a dispute on something, you have to submit proof that it's incorrect. You can't be like Shaggy and just say it wasn't me on those collections. You have to submit proof that those collections were in fact paid or whatever the case may be, that late pay was actually paid. You have to show proof that you paid it on time, things like that. Documentation is key here. So keep that in mind when you are doing a dispute. After you file a dispute, 
the credit reporting agency will send you a letter saying that your dispute is in process. And if it is deemed that the information on the credit report is incorrect, it will be fixed, but you need to make sure that it does. And this is where you got to let your inner Karen out and like bug them until they get it done. And then also once it's corrected, you can request notice of the correction to be sent to individuals or businesses that had received your credit report. So let's say you applied for a mortgage and they said you had some collections, but those collections you had actually paid a long time ago. You can dispute that, show proof of payment, and then they will update your credit report and you can have that sent to the mortgage company. Also, there are time limits on negative information. If you have old collections on your credit report, there is a time limit on how long those can sit there dragging your credit score down. Now, there are some exceptions to this. Bankruptcies and some other judgments and liens can still last more than seven years. But for basic collections, this rule applies. Now, let's get into this, how this actually works. So it's, it's called the seven year rule, but it's really more of a seven and a half year rule because the seven year rule doesn't start until 180 days or six months after the last time you've paid on that debt. Now, this is really important. The clock starts on the last time you paid on that debt. So if you have a collection that's on like a payment plan, this isn't gonna work. So here's how it works. So in this example, let's say you went 30 days late on August of 2018. You were 30 days late. That's when it first showed as a late pay on your credit report. In November, it goes 120 days late and the creditor closes the account. And then it shows up as a collection on your credit report. So we actually start the clock in July of 2018, not August, because in August you went 30 days late. The last time you paid on it was at least 30 days before that, which would be July. So July 2018, add 180 days, you get to January 2019, and that's when the seven year clock starts. From January 2019 to seven years is January 2026. And in January 2026, it's gone. It's gone. It will never bother you again. You never paid it, but it's gone. It's off your credit report and they can't bring it back. This is really important because some creditors or some, some collection companies will sell that debt to another creditor and they'll try to recycle it and bring it back up again. And this is where you need to do your due diligence and know what that collection was originally for and when the last time you paid on it was. And keep records of that because this is what you need to dispute this because if it's actually been seven and a half years since you paid on it, they can't bring it back. It's gone forever. And if they do, you dispute it and you get it removed. So there you go, that's the seven year rule. So there you have it. These are the steps to get your credit report, to review it for accuracy and to correct any errors on there. Now, next we're gonna get into credit repair and credit repair is not an easy thing to do, but it definitely can be done. So in the next video, we're going to go over how to build, maintain, and repair your credit. So stay tuned. We'll see you next time.